Tyler Johnson's out. Uh, he's day-to-day -day upper body. Jason Garrison's out probably three to four weeks upper body. Andre Schuster's out one to two weeks uh, upper body. Cedric Paquette, game time decision. All right, take everything about the game. Did the timing be any worse with, with some of these injuries? How do you deal with all these injuries? <laughs> uh, it's, it's unreal because it's, it's, it's like we go a long stretch and everything's rolling pretty well and then you lose like a multitude of guys in one game. It's no different than the last time we were in here. We, we lose uh, Palat, Coburn, and Paquette in one game, and we kind of had to rally around that. We did, and, and now we've got significant injuries to some players uh, that are a big part of our team, and we're just going to have to find a way. Are you surprised that Paquette is even... Actually, if you're going to sit here, if I was going to... If I was in your position right now and was going to say the kid that I thought definitely was going to be out if looking at the replays i thought it was him so I, he's got the nickname the dump truck for a reason he's pretty solid back there because it looked really bad in on the replays but uh i don't know maybe it was just a trauma thing the way everything happened but he's feeling pretty good so but again we won't know till warm-ups <clears throat> is that it that fast well, I think you know, we, we make that trade uh, and, and, and Steve acquires uh, Braden Coburn who played for us four games. It was a big part of what we had going. And uh, I think it, to have uh, Gary and, and Coburn as a pair uh, to be able to throw out there against any line in the league, it's pretty comforting. And, uh, but you have to have depth and we'll, that's, we're going to be tested in that now. So, uh, but all the guys that we have in our lineup, they've played National Hockey League games uh, this year and everybody knows what to expect uh, but now we're just having to demand you know our, our depth is being tested and we're gonna, we, the other guys are going to have to step up and uh, that's the only way we're going to manage this. Will Marcia Sol's uh, Well uh, Marcia Sol is dependent on Paquette. Yeah. yeah. What can you tell us about that kid? Well uh, I, I have first-hand knowledge of him. I coached against him in the minors and when he was in Hartford and I know when you circle the other team, their go-to guys. He was one of the guys we definitely circled. That kid's got a great nose for the net. Uh, even watching him at the end here, the drills he's doing against Vasilevsky, he was tucking them in everywhere. Uh, he plays hard, he plays with passion, and uh, it was a great acquisition for us because he's really been a staple in the American League for us. Um, we've just had numbers up here, and so I haven't had the opportunity since earlier to bring him up, but you know, they might be in a situation now. Just because of the call-up rules, you can't really you can't afford to just bring guys up and then play them. It's on an emergency basis, but we're getting pretty darn close to an emergency, so uh, he might see some action. A lot of work on the power play this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you have a lot of talent. <coughs> what, what would you like to see from to to adjust and get some some results on a regular basis? Well, I think when you dissect a game and you go 0 for 4 or 0 for 6, uh, you're scratching your head asking why. And I think, you know, would it have mattered in the Detroit game? I don't know. Uh, definitely in the Na Nashville game, well, we needed one, and we, we get points out of that game. Uh, so we look back and say, okay, we're 0 for our last 10 or 11, but before that, I think we were 11 for our last 41. So we'll take that any time, day of the week. It's just we've had kind of a rough week. And um, the one thing, um, when we start getting too cute and we want to, place a puck in the net instead of shooting a puck in the net, that's when we get in a little bit of trouble. And so that's something we've been working on. How much of a motivation is it to keep such slate against Montreal? <laughs> <sighs> well, it's, uh, it's something we've definitely talked about in the room. Uh, did we expect um, that we'd be 4-0 against them right now at the beginning of the year? Probably not, but now we are. And to be able to run the table on them would be a lot of fun. Uh, as postseason gets near and if you know, we haven't punched our ticket yet but hopefully we can uh, do that with a win tonight uh, you know the way it looks you know, are we going to run into them right in the first round of the playoffs uh, I don't know if it's looking that way uh, so if we're not going to see them in the first round it'd be really fun to just regarding take them out the whole way yeah go ahead regarding the the power play uh, have you had trouble finding like second or third options when when Stammer's one-timer is being neutralized uh I don't know. Sometimes I think when you have a player like Stammer, uh, one of the things 
and it's not his fault at all, but he guys look to get him the puck, mm -hmm. and they look to get him the puck for a reason because he can put it in the net. Uh, but sometimes guys got to be a little bit more selfish and say, hey, you know, there's other options uh, besides besides Stammer. And I think, uh, you know, he's he's got 40 goals because the kid can can score. And so, but we have to find, not, as you said, we can't lean on him the whole time. And uh, we've got some other talented players out there that can put a puck in the net. That's why, you know, sometimes. In the rare occasion that selfish is good, sometimes you got to be a little bit more selfish on the PP. Is some of the silver lining with some of these injuries that you get maybe some guys into the lineup here late in the season mm -hmm. where maybe you might have to count on them next month if it comes to so if they're able to get some reps in with you guys? I don't know. I don't know about this. I, I don't know about the silver lining. I'd rather not have to deal with the lining and just you know put your best foot forward. But uh, I don't know. It's just it's the way this is playing out right now. It's unfortunate because we don't necessarily get to put our best foot forward um, but it's a challenge and sometimes you want to see if your team can respond in something like this um, and you know we're going to come in and kick the can and walk around with our head down or we're going to come in and battle and see what happens so we'll see you tonight how much of a you mentioned to steve this morning that he, that he hit a rough patch on the power play like mm -hmm. you just described mm -hmm. and he disagreed and said no it's been a rough season at what point does it become kind of mental power play I don't know. Like, dude, I, I think that's a little extreme to say rough season. Uh, I don't know exactly where we've been kind of hovering around 18 percent for uh, for most of the year. Uh, you know, is, is sitting at any? We've been anywhere from 13th to 16th, 17th in the league. Is that acceptable? Probably not for our standards. But there's still 15 teams below us in their percentage. So as bad as we're struggling, you know, 14 other coaches are scratching their head worse than we are. Uh, the one thing about the power play, for me, it's timing. And you, know, you have to click at 25% all year long? I don't think so. But when you need that big goal, that's when it comes. When you need to be in their zone for the full two minutes, not necessarily score, but make sure momentum is on your side, that's what has to happen. And sometimes that's what power play can do, is swing momentum even when you don't score. And uh, sometimes we've done that. Of late, we haven't. And I think that's where guys get a little frustrated.